Growing up in Jamaica, I don't really see racism because I'm from the ghetto. But moving to Florida and going to a new school, I was introduced to a new community where it was all white. To the point where when I went to school and people ask where you live, and I say up the road, certain area, they're like, oh, your parents was to sell the white lady. I never have no idea what that was. And then meeting the kids, I realized their parents wouldn't allow me to play with them. I used to skateboard and then I end up teaching them how to skateboard, but their parents wasn't allowing me to be around them. Still didn't read it off as anything. I just read it as just me coming to an area and they don't know me. In hindsight, it could have been racism. But I was so young, I'm from a different country. I, I didn't read it as such. I am tall, with dreads, and a beard. Black Jamaican. I was on set where I was the stage manager. And a woman, I think she was a producer or something. I was approaching her and this lady, the closer I get, the, the, the more scared she started getting and she was like almost about to run out of her shoes. And then I told her who I was because I saw the fear on her and then she chill out. And she was scared of me, just me just approaching her. I mean, it's crazy, man. So, because when you go on sets, there's not, there's just not a lot of us there. In America, I have to worry about that. And I have to watch how I carry myself. A lot of Jamaicans leave Jamaica and they go to America or they go to Europe or they go to anywhere and they go more opportunities, more freedom. But it's not actually more freedom. There's actually way more restrictions. You're free, but you're not free. Because you always have to be watching your back. Which means you're not really living.